Hey everyone, this is Jim Grzanzia from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. Um, back here in Honolulu for Unbox Hawaii 2020 with Benjamin from Germany. Benjamin, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Nice to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you for actually thank you for being here. Uh, Benjamin, what's your last name? Help me out with that. So my last name is Notoft. So Benjamin Notoft or in Twitter Data Duke. You know the mascot and the Star Trek uh, person. Data. Not off. Okay, so I, I got your last name. Okay, cool. So you're a groundbreaker, an Oracle groundbreaker ambassador, and you're also involved in Java work as well, right? Yeah, that's correct. So usually I work at Java projects. Uh, currently, it's like big transformation projects from monoliths to microservices, presumably. And yeah, I did this like the past six, seven years. Before that, I was in, um, I would say, data center space and finance space, working with Java technologies from Java E to Spring. Okay, cool. So uh, we were talking a little bit earlier um, about some of your conference work. You yep. run a lot of conferences in Germany, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, I started out like a few years back when I founded the Java user group, which was my second user group that I founded with uh, joining the board at Javaland. And there I enhanced it a lot by um, also bringing in new people so that we had a better diversity rate, like bringing in three to four like people with diverse backgrounds and also reaching out to more diverse speakers and speaker associations and leading three streams currently at the conference. And I did like, I think 40 interviews at the conference already and spoke there and do workshops and stuff. and take care not just about the content but also about the quality around the conference and starting from from that point I ended up with uh, getting more and more grip in conferences and besides that I now start to organize a conference called Cloudland which is happening this year for the first small iteration and uh, at another conference where I had before I'm now the backbone which is micro exchange happening the seventh time now in Berlin and we had all the speakers that wrote any books in microservices world already as as guests um, and it started out as a specific special topic conference and now we broadened the topic from microservices to serverless last year and this year to also a uh, cloud native space and therefore added to our board uh, members from all cloud providers. So we have somebody from Red Hat for, for OpenShift and Azure Advocates, then um, IBM Cloud and we have like two Java champions and then I think two or three crown breakers in the committee. And as speakers, we also have a lot of Java champions currently. So totally going that route and it will be awesome. We'll have two day speaker trip that we will run. We have Sam Aaron in the evening that will show uh, live coding. And it will be a really cool event, like three hour live coding session with producing music on the background with Sonic Pi. So running conferences, you just spoke about a lot of uh, you know, yeah. a lot of logistics and a lot of conferences. Um, what it seems like you must love uh, you must love be, uh, love building community because this yeah. is a, a significant amount of work and actually running just one conference actually let alone multiple like you've just described yeah yeah it is but you know um i was a backend engineer and focusing on backend engineering work and i loved it but i missed when i moved to another state that there were no user groups at all and then i started with the first one and the second and it's up to the sixth ones and I built teams around it and it, I love to work with people and I did it all in my free time. Uh, so uh, I had just like three vacation days left between Christmas and New Year's Eve. And besides that, I was speaking at conferences and uh, since, since that I have a huge network of people I can reach out to feed my user groups. And it's like, you just write them a Twitter PM when you have had like, several cups of beer at several conferences together and it's like a snap and therefore you can engage with the leaders in specific topics and engage with them and bring them to your country and it's really amazing and people love it and our attendance rate for example at micro exchange is that out of the 400 visitors like we did a pull last year and 
80% have 15 plus years of experience, so very senior level architects, dev tech leads and so on. And 60% of these worked already four to five years with microservices, so bleeding edge engineers that we attract and it's really high quality. And that's what I love about building these conferences. And also I love diversity, therefore our board is now like I think 40 to 50 percent it's with diverse people also speakers it will be i think from my perspective in europe or at least for germany i can speak because i know nearly all conferences we have the best diversity right now for not being a testing or agile conference because they have better rates but for being an engineering conference in the java ecosystem so is this your first time here to unbox hawaii yeah unfortunately yes but it can just be the first time because Unbox Hawaii just changed its name to Unbox Hawaii, but Lava from Lava One uh, or Lava One Conf. And the fun part was that uh, Chris came up with it like two years before and I wanted to join it. Finally, now I have the time to do it. And I'm really happy here and there's an amazing crowd. And I think uh, the concept is really compelling because you just have like two days of open space and it's nearly just like to half days, it, at least it feels like it, because we end at two, but the real work starts in the coffee breaks. That's what you learn from unconferences. So I also have run unconferences before and bar camps and stuff, but we get to know a lot of high quality speakers from all around the world here and we can exchange, we can exchange in the morning by doing a beach park together, what I did this morning, kicking it off at 5 a.m., which I usually not the morning person, but- he What's up at 5 a.m.? So what did you, what did you do at 5 a.m.? At 5 a.m. I connected with somebody from another company from Microsoft and we had it uh, for a beach walk, oh. one and a half hours with our without shoes um, and the uh, waves were hitting our feet and casually talking about how we approach conferences. So she is a very great speaker I learned in a, a Spark community leading there for seven years already and giving sessions with 700 to 800 people and since i'm doing now keynotes and stuff she was interested in how she can improve for the next steps and how she can tackle her first keynote and uh yeah it was a really nice exchange so and also she wants to to go into the direction of being a senior architect or something in next two years and as i've been an architect before it's like i can share my my experience and she could share her world in what she's living in and what she's breathing and and fulfilling and in being in a country like israel and coming to hawaii is kind of amazing and meeting here and i have the feeling uh, it's one of the best conferences i've been ever and this conference here yeah because of the people and I like to have more like deep dives and uh, exchanges where I encourage with people not just while having a 10 minutes conversation or five minutes, but going like the extra mile or talking to a person like three hours at the conference, which is usually not possible because you go drinking a lot and you party and you have the, all the, the whole program. And then sometimes you attend sessions, sometimes not. Sometimes people approach you that are not like high profile speakers or high profile engineers. And then you're more like the person who is giving, which is nice, I love it. But here you can receive stuff. Even if you have a lot of experience, you can receive so much knowledge and digest it. And you meet a lot of other conference and community organizers because this is like, a really a hidden conference champion or unconference champion, I would say. Yeah, a lot of these people here, they're developers, but they're also community organizers, like you mentioned. Yep, exactly. And that's the benefit that it brings to my table. I can exchange with the peers on uh, eye level. And this is not very often that you can do this. Um, and if you ask me if there's any other conference like this, I would say no. And the benefit, of course, is of the nice venue here. But it's actually quite cheap to come here, so I paid the same amount as I would go anyways to the US. If I speak at QCon New York, like last year, or at Code One, where I gave a workshop. No, uh, QCon was also a workshop. Like last year, I was at 15 countries speaking, but yeah. So, and this one is like really different because it slows you down. And while slowing you down, you, you think more deeper about stuff and you have the time to do it and then interact with each other. And here, nobody is like, 
upset and wants to push you content into your brain, which is sometimes happening in other conferences here, people are much more relaxed and then you first listen. And this is the most important part. I, yeah, I find a lot of conferences, well, I'm a lot of traditional conferences, obviously, the metric is how many speakers you get, how many sessions you have. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can't, as, as a developer or even just as a you know, community person like me, you can't sit through six or seven no. full, full technical sessions all day long. Yeah. It, you can, basically, but then your yeah, brain is full and it doesn't make a lot of sense. And here is more like focusing on, on specific topics. So I am. What is the discussion here? You can actually drill down and it's informal. I, w I want to point out one session which I enjoyed uh, extremely and a session that uh, is also a topic of my heart, which is about diversity. And I've been at many sessions about diversity and I've pushed it at several user groups and conferences and have other user group organizers and conference organizers to push it and how to deal with it. but. So, and also before that, I had a career in uh, student politics, even talking at the German parliament on the highest level and organizing conferences there with all the political uh, party leaders. It was like I did six conferences for student, uh, for students, 300 people, like 20, 30 sessions, something like this, and podium discussions and stuff, and not what not. And there's also a lot of aspects of diversity because in politics it's much more present than in tech community it's really low profile at tech community we care about it because we know that we have a lot of uh, introverts and also diverse people but here i got to know so many new aspects and i was writing stuff down which i usually do not need to do anymore because i have a lot of background in that regard but here it was like well presented it was a lot of examples and everybody it went around the microphone or like the voice and we were like 20 people and it was such a diverse culture here that I've never seen at any conference before so we had like tennis from many different countries from many different cultural backgrounds and then the dimension went from in diversity aspects it went from disability to socio-ecological backgrounds like uh, some were like coming from a low pro low income household some from a high oh, High income household. Some had like, like just like the gender, just gender topic, like also including transformation, right? Which is also really hard to, to deal with and with, you know, all the pronouns and do you use third form plural to talk to a person and so on, right? And they were really aware of this from people that they cannot see, the blind people, and also like not just. Um, gender but also ethical groups very different ones and also like um, yeah, the, the, the not just ethical groups but also like the different countries and everybody had seen. so I was like there was just like two main two presumably like non-diverse people and the one was like was uh, local but he is engaged in running um, a community for his his child for sports and now he has to deal with this topic a and myself being also a white male right in 30-ish age range but I have a, also a small disability which is not public but uh, I could bring it up here and it was the first time that I did at a conference at all and this is compelling very good. So, yeah, there's lots of technical sessions here and lots of sessions about, you know, work-life balance, but there's also the diversity things like you mentioned. Um, so, we're here in Hawaii. The conference is over, actually. You know, we're actually headed into the afternoon now. They're actually serving lunch right now behind us. we got to get some food. So, you can hang out for a few days. You're going to leave tomorrow. So, I have a few days left and I will go with some speakers uh, we will probably hit the waves surfing. Maybe I will go to another island and see the first time in my life lava. Oh, yeah. And maybe dive with turtles yeah. that's up on the schedule and we will go hiking on the mountains and there will be a few speakers that are like conference participants and we, we planned out uh, a lot of cool stuff. And, and because we are so passionate, I, I'm sure we are not just talking about 
oh, the weather is nice and this is the trees and this is the local agriculture and vegetation, but also about what's in what's in our mind. And so we will continue the conference, even though officially it has stopped. Benjamin, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys back here in Honolulu. Take it easy. Bye-bye now.